Hey everyone, this is Edmund here with another review video. Before I dive into that, I just want to thank everyone for your comments and suggestions. You've asked me to do better lighting, better color grading, and uh, set up for my video. So hopefully I'm learning from all of you, and thank you for all your suggestions and comments. And I just want to let you know that today's video has been shot entirely with the LG V60 ThinQ. And I'll be doing a review on that shortly afterwards. So today, without further ado, let me introduce you to my new daily driver laptop. It's the Asus ZenBook 14. Let's take a look. Now to tell you the truth, this may be one of the last laptop review series I'm going to do unless I find something better or unless um, a company will send me a laptop for review. Because this has been such a nice laptop to have and I've compared it to the Lenovo Flex 5 which I have been using and I really like. Now don't get me wrong, this laptop does have its pros and cons. But overall, it has great value, powerful, and great build quality. Now, first of all, the one finger open. No problem whatsoever. And the moment I open this laptop, I really like the screen to body ratio. It's got a nice big screen, 14 inch display. This laptop is super light. It may even be lighter than the MacBook Air, but it is much more powerful because it features the latest Ryzen 4700U CPU and it has an MX350 NVIDIA graphics chip. Now, I know some of you may wonder because um, rumor has it that there's a lot of thermal throttling going on and I just didn't find that to be the case. And I've played some games on it, and the frame rate is excellent. Comparing to the Lenovo Flex 5, this fan is almost silent. I can barely hear it when it's running. Right now, I think the fan is on, but I really cannot hear it at all. So the thermals right now is running at around 36 degrees. How amazing is that? Very cool and even when you stress it out in some gaming, it hovers at around 65 degrees with no thermal throttling. Now just to get this out of the way, comparing to the Lenovo Flex 5, I really like the Flex 5 keyboard. Now this is really tough to see this laptop during the day because the keys are very subtle, if you know what I mean. With the backlight, it's very, very hard to visibly see the keys and you just gotta learn to type from finger memory and not look at the keyboard at all and you really appreciate it. And the other thing is, I would have liked that the keyboard is directly centered without these home keys, page up and page down, end keys and the function keys on the right hand side. Now I've installed this program called Sharp Keys to map the keys that are here to extend so that the enter key extends to the page down key because I've mistyped that so many times. And also the end key will extend to the shift key. And basically I really don't need the keys to be on this side here. I just need to extend all of the functions across here so that it feels as if the keyboard is aligned right in the middle. Now I will also link in the description where I have found the better sound driver for the Realtek sound card and after two days, solid days of tinkering, I have got the Dolby working and I also have this Sound Blaster Connect working with the profile that I really like and I'm just going to play you some Amazon music and I'm going to turn it up
is really submersive and you can even feel the speakers vibrate on the side and I'm going to turn this off and it will sound really flat by itself so out the box this is how it sounds like but after some tinkering we can have this which is amazing it's got amazing bass and I really really love it the other thing that I really like is that how compact and how well built this laptop is it's very light and I've said this many times but it's so easy to carry this around the only thing that I wish that they would have is a touchscreen. This is a non-touchscreen laptop, but I would say that most of the time I don't use the touchscreen. Given that I've had the experience with the Lenovo Flex 5, yes, I sometimes might use the touchscreen to enlarge the PDF or the web page, but because the trackpad is so responsive, I really don't seem to need to use the touchscreen at all. It's got a great finish on it. It's very smooth, very responsive, comparing to the Lenovo Flex 5, which is also good, but the clicking is very satisfying on the ZenBook 14. And also, it has a very nifty number pad on the keyboard. And I know it's a gimmick and it does work, but it doesn't work really well, but it's something that's nice to have and I really appreciate what Asus has done here. Now another win for this laptop is the Windows IR camera for the Windows Hello login. So I don't need to use my fingerprints anymore and it works. 9 out of 10 times, unless you're in a very poor condition or completely dark room, it still works, but it maybe fail once or twice here and there. Now I've talked about how light this laptop is and how well built it is. They have actually marked this as military grade finish. And I believe that because I really like this metal finish. Now let's talk about specs because this laptop is no slouch. It's got a 16 gigs of RAM soldered on and it has 512 Samsung SSD inside this laptop. And I also think that this laptop can even outrun the MacBook Pros out there because it has an integrated NVIDIA GeForce 350 MX video card in there with two gigabytes built into it. I was able to play graphics heavy games really smoothly. I know some people will ask, hey, is there thermal throttling on this laptop? And what about the heat that's flowing on the screen? Well, I haven't found it to be a problem whatsoever. Um, in fact, right now, we are sitting at around 41 degrees Celsius. And I've turned this laptop on for a while now. And I don't, I don't think the fan has even kicked in because it's so silent. So because of the great value and the great price and so much power packed into this laptop, I would have to make this my daily driver. My name is Edmund and I'll see you on the next one.